All right, so I'm ready to come in here and burn in this uh, bearing flange, uh, bearing retainer. And as you can see, I got a couple little 90 degree welding magnets uh, on there holding it in place just to hopefully keep it at a true 90 degrees. As I'm welding this side, it, as you're welding any side, it does have a tend to uh, warp and to bend in the direction of the weld. As the weld cools, it contracts and it can pull uh, your, weld, your piece out of alignment. So these little magnets are there to help keep it in place and keep it at a true 90. I'm going to weld both sides of course, but once I get this side done, then I can get rid of the magnets uh, and come in and do this side. Although I probably will put the magnets back on this side when I come to weld this side. So, I'm going to put my helmet on, and my gloves and everything, and we will lay we're burning this flange retainer. Okay, and one thing I want to point out, when you're welding thick metal to, to thin metal, uh, there's, a, there's a trick to it. This is, these bearing flanges are about a quarter inch thick, and of course this engine plate is a 16 gauge. What you want to do is focus your heat, focus your welding on the thicker plate. So that would be keeping the, the little MIG wire almost always on this thicker plate. And you just kind of want to come down and just kind of let it flow down into the thinner material. Uh, the thinner material doesn't take as much heat uh, to make a penetrating weld. So focus your heat on the thicker material and just kind of let it fall down and soak into the thinner material. Oh. Alright, so let me get everything rearranged here. And then we'll come in and I'll weld the other side. A little trickier to get to, but I can get it. It'll come in like this. Not a real good torch angle, but it's what I got, so. Yeah, like this. That bearing flange is finished. Another quick point I wanted to make when you're welding uh, thick metal to thin metal, or even just thick metal in general, what you want to do is come in here and make a little bevel. You can see how I beveled this uh, thick quarter inch uh, flange plate. Beveled it on the side. I even put a little bevel there on the bottom. And that helps the weld it gives you a groove to weld into, so your weld penetrates deeper, uh, especially into the thicker material. So just a little point there. All right, so now we're over here on the other side, and we're gonna weld in this second uh, bearing flange. This handlebars are really kinda in my way, but I'll get through it. All right, here we go. Alright, that side's done. I'll come around and I'll do the other side of that. It's hot in here. Those are completely finished. You can see how much heat is in there. So it's definitely a good weld. Certainly gonna hold. Right, as you can see, it's still smoking. Those are certainly some pretty hot welds. They're 
not the prettiest looking welds, at least on this side, they're not that great. I'd say that one's pretty good. I'm happy with that one. But they're gonna hold, that's for damn sure. So, we'll just let these cool down and uh, we'll start reassembling everything. Just wanted to give you a real quick shot of what the engine plate and the extension arms and the bearing retainers and everything look like without the engine and all that on there. I'm not sure if I've shown that all. Come around to the other side. Yeah, just wanted to give you an idea of what everything looks like without all the other stuff in the way cluttering up the view. All right, here we go. I got everything all kind of reassembled. We'll zoom in a little bit. I need to go a little faster than that. And you can kind of get a look at everything. See how everything is laid out. See if we can get a shot of the chain line here. I'm not really, it's a little too high, but you can kind of see the jack shaft sprockets about right there, idler sprocket, and then there's the rear drive sprocket. Okay, we'll come around to this side. You can see the back of the uh, jack shaft there. I'm gonna cut off this extra, but I'm not gonna do it right now. I'm just gonna wait until I get everything all reassembled and uh, worry about it then. I don't have any of the keys and the sprockets or anything like that. I still need to go to the hardware store and get a couple more longer bolts uh, to mount up the rear of the engine. Uh, but that's basically it. Jack shaft's in place, and I think I'm gonna even try and uh, attach that rear chain uh, tonight. We'll see how that goes.